So I'm Martin Dahlberg. I'm the other Martin. Just to make sure there's no confusion. And this is Jeff Webster. I am the Learning Technologies Coordinator at NC State University. And so I am responsible for being both the Rosetta Stone, kind of translating between developers, uh, system administrators, um, help desk, faculty, students, and making sure that we're kind of moving in the right direction. And Jeff Webster is our Director of Educational Technology Services, AKA Manager of the Magic. And so we're gonna talk, oh, I'm sorry, yes, of course. I'm used to roaming, that's my problem. So, um, one of the, I guess one of the issues with open source is that uh, one of the, the wonderful things is that you can modify it, you can change it any way that you want, but that's also a big burden as well. So if you go ahead and you know, innovate and modify and whatever, when you upgrade or you know, even just add patches, if you're gonna upgrade core, you have to maintain those things and you have to patch each and every time. So I don't even know how many modifications we have. Jeff probably knows, but it's not really important. It's quite a few. And so we try to very, be very judicious in how we handle this. So you know, it's possible to attach a different data sources, to modify, customize things to meet our particular needs or what our faculty need. Um, if you're kind of, you know, not in education, there's other things that you can do. But, you know, we try to encourage our community to be involved, you know, all of our educators and even, even the students can submit feature requests to get involved, to actually feel like they have some ownership. And so, as a result, we obviously don't want to just say yes to everything that people request because there's some pretty crazy stuff that we hear. Uh, so we have a process for managing that. And you know, you have to keep in mind that you know, where somebody may want, you know, people have suggested that we have, for example, as a default, editing on as a default when a faculty member goes in, or instructor goes in to work on their course. And since the default has been no, we typically don't want to change things where it's going to irritate most faculty that are used to a certain way just to accommodate one person. So we have a process for dealing with that. Um, so faculty, staff, and students want new technology. Um, we have a system uh, called User Echo. That, you know, we, we just uh, took a little survey and picked something where they can go ahead and enter a feature request. They have to answer a few questions, particularly we, we try to get them off. You know, people have a tendency to latch on to a tool. I want this. So they see something that's flashy or, you know, a vendor at a conference or something like that, and they say, I want that. And so we try to force them to say, what are you trying to accomplish? Don't tell me the tool you want. Tell me what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe we already have something. So what would you like to see changed? How is this going to help you, uh, you know, perform, you know, teach better, connect with your students better? And if they have any external resources, so now if they want to tell me about that wonderful product that they saw, or if there's a Moodle doc page that they want to show you know, for a particular plugin, they can send us to it. So why do we do this? We want to promote engagement with the learning community. Uh, we want to make sure that we understand the needs of our community. It's actually also a great way to spot future trends. Our 2,000 faculty know better than we do. Okay, they're all out there. They're all, you know, they're, they're seeing what's going on. They're exposed to many more conferences, many more advertisements, many more colleagues from different institutions. So they have a much better idea of what they're looking at, of, you know, what's going on. For example, document annotation. The first time that somebody, you know, a, a document annotation and collaboration, the first time that a faculty member came to us and said, uh, you know, I want to be able to have my students work collaboratively on a document, like take a PDF or something, and go ahead and, you know, students have a conversation on it. It's kind of like, okay, I'm not sure I understand why, but you could use Google Docs for that. And, you know, I got two more feature requests, and at that time I started to see a trend, and I realized, you know, we need to, we need to really look at this. And then we found a tool that allows them to do that. Um, so, how do we do this? So we iterated through several processes over the last 10 or 11 years that we've been doing this. The first time that we did it, I, the coordinator, review the request. I make sure that it's a well-formed request, that they've answered all the questions. Uh, if there's an error, if it's really a bug that they're trying to report, I'll deal with that appropriately. I then send it, we have governance committees, 
And I'll tell you where all these resources are at the end of the presentation. You can go and take a look at, at what our governance committees look like. But we have basically a best practices and support that looks at it from a pedagogical point of view and a customer needs and policy that looks at it from an institutional or organizational point of view. And then they report to a steering committee and the steering committee makes a decision. So document the results and then I send the approvals, approved requests over to the systems team. And what ended up happening is we were spending all of our time on feature requests. Governance became feature requests. We didn't really look at policy. We didn't look at anything else. So second iteration, instead of as they come in and on a rolling basis, we started to batch them twice a year. So yes, we'll be responsive to you, but it's going to take you several months to hear back. And that at least allowed us to kind of in September and October and then in January and February to go ahead and evaluate these feature requests, kind of push them through and make decisions. But it's still taking a lot of effort. So third iteration, I got some power. Now I have the ability to fast track. So if I see a particular feature request that I think is either really arcane or really good, I have the ability to go to an internal committee that meets every two weeks and says, I want to approve this. We may have a little discussion about it, and we make a decision, and we move on. If we can't agree, then we send it through the regular process. And we do that. I like to have a check on me. I mean, I think I know everything, and I think I'm you know, the smartest person in the world, but clearly I'm not. And so sometimes I have a good idea, or I think that I'm on the right track, and the collective wizard of the room Sometimes it's a little humiliating, but gets me set in the right direction. So um, when do we do this? Uh, our director works with staff and projects, and I think this is yours, right? Yep. So yes, so Marty gets to oversee the fun part of reviewing these requests, talking with our customers, and looking at the new stuff. And once they're approved, I get them to actually try to implement them. Um, so, the, I guess the first thing we do is we add, we add the new request to our backlog. For those that do either Agile or Scrum or anything, it's not a traditional backlog. It's just a list of items. They can be really tiny. So, an example, install the matrix question type. They can be really ugly. Um, one that's still an open one is have hidden groups within, within Moodle um, related to privacy of groups where you don't want the students to be able to see who is actually in the group with them. Um, that one actually may be getting close to a solution. Um, the tracker is actually getting action. But we have those. We evaluate them. We look at, you know, sort of um, how many people is it going to impact? How hard is it going to be to work on it? Um, and that gets us a waiting on it to put it on our priority list. As we go through those, we, every once in a while we'll review the backlog, move items over to the Kanban board, which is where we track the actual active work that people are working on. Um, one thing we have to balance is we've got these feature requests, and then we've got our regular development that needs to happen, and the regular processes are out there. So things like, OK, we've got a new feature request, but we also have to actually deal with the new version of Moodle that's coming out. Bal balance the workload, because kind of need to do the new version of Moodle. Um, we want the feature requests, but you can't do, spend all your time on, on the new stuff. Um, and then at regular intervals, we actually will also look at that backlog and look at things that have been on there for a while and say, okay, this one's been on the backlog for two years. It's still low priority. We're never going to get to this. We throw those back over to Marty. He takes them to the, back to the governance and says, okay, we did approve this. We thought it was good at the time but we just can't get to it. We want to decline it now. Um, and so far, we're actually doing a pretty good job. We've had over um, 600 feature requests come through the system. Uh, we've got about 250 of them that were declined before they got, well, I guess some of them were declined before they got to the committee, and some of them have been post-decline. Um, we've got 55 that are still actually in progress that we're trying to work on. So I think that's actually a pretty good turnover. Um, yeah, no, so since we have a little bit of time, so yeah, as Jeff's mentioned, we have about 600. That's over, what, about 12 years? Yes. So 
uh, the, the pace has slowed down a little bit until we upgraded to Moodle 4. So you can find out, you know, we'll talk about how we upgraded to Moodle 4 uh, tomorrow. Uh, but we did get a flurry of requests to basically make Moodle 4 like Moodle 3.9. <laughs> so we're kind of batched those together and we're gonna deal with those all at one time, I think uh, next month. But you know, that's a natural effect of people not liking change. But you know, the nice thing about it is you're at least giving your users a voice. So I may have to say no to them nicely, but at least they've been listened to. And I think that's kind of important. So we have a number of resources. Uh, you should be able to download the slides. And there's two links there. One is specifically to our SOP on feature requests. And by the way, I'm standing next to the author of the <laughs> SOP on SOPs, <laughs> if you ever need something. But we have feature requests. And in general, we have our NC State Wolfware governance site and the feature, request, uh, the feature request SOP is on there. But there's a variety of things. You can take a look at our uh, governance chart. We have SOPs on a variety of other things. And as far as I'm concerned, that's open source. It's available for anybody to use, steal, modify, you know, using your organization, what have you, or, you know, scoff at and laugh. But, and now, open up some questions. Thank you. That's really interesting. I love your, your processes and how you organize it. Yeah, I like things that are well organized. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We have some time, so if there's anyone with a question, okay, I can see one over there. So, well organized is a relative term. Well, We'd I like to think. Was, I thought she looked Hello, really I'm uh, Marie Stegeman. Um, I have a question. You started your uh, story uh, about how people can. Uh, enter requests, how users can enter requests, and you named user echo. Is it something inside Moodle, or it's a different thing? No. Um, unfortunately, user echo was something that uh, we pay for. I think the license is relatively inexpensive. Do you remember how much it was? Um, ours is extremely cheap because we got in early. Oh, okay. But I believe it, an annual license is less than a thousand dollars. Right. I wouldn't concentrate too much on the system. I think you'll need to find out what works. If you're going to implement a system like this, you need to just find what works for you. In general, we were looking for something that would allow people to submit a request, would allow others to upvote them, would allow us to make comments or other people in the community to make comments like, yeah, I really like this or I'd like to see it like that, and then for us to process them and uh, put them in different categories based upon whether they were... Uh, entered, uh, under review, uh, planned, uh, completed, or rejected. So I think you just need to find a system. User Echo, I would not say is a perfect thing. It's just it's a tool that seems to work. And it was relatively inexpensive, and so we stuck with that. But I'm sure there are plenty of other tools out there that would do that. Any other questions? I was going to say one quick piece. The being able to see the the status of those requests was one of the, the important pieces of feedback we got from the, the faculty member, especially things like the declined requests, so they could see that it had already been requested before. And it might be that, yeah, it was declined two years ago. We will let them submit it again. And that's you know some of those where it's okay, it actually makes sense to do that now. And so some of them will get reconsidered. Um, I, I'm keen to understand uh, the, the support structure that you have. Um, you know, is, is your team in the middle between academic and IT, or are you IT? Is there a design authority that is driven by academics? Uh, is there a filter for these requests to say, um, sir, that's already a capability that we have, and, you know, and, and not a new request, not a bug, but this, go, go to our team for, for further orientation or training. So that kind of, thank you. So, so if you can talk to that and, 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 and describe how that adds to the success, because if we are to you know, implement the same, we'd love to learn from you. Thank you. All right, so I guess the, our organization um, is only re responsible for academic technology. So we sit outside of central IT. Um, we actually are kind of nice. We actually have some additional people that are non-technical. So like we have instructional designers, media team, and those people within our same organization. So that's great. Um, for the filter, 
Um, Marty is the filter on um, those requests where he looks at them. We talked about looking at them when they first come in, and so he'll look to see, yes, you know, oh, I want a tool that does discussion. Wow, there's a forum in Moodle. It, you might want to look at this. It does that. Um, you know, for obvious simple example, but he will filter through looking for things that we've already got in our toolkit. So I like to say that I have the best job at NC State because I am essentially the product owner. I have no direct reports. I have no budget. But I work with all of the different teams in our uh, educational technology group. So both the training, um, the training, uh, help desk, uh, t the tech people, the designers, and the faculty and the students. Okay. So, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you no. very much. Thank you. Thank you.